This week we'll use the new Showalter index calculation from metpy.calc, and we'll use some archived upper air data from an outbreak event earlier this year to make a map based on all of the radioson data from that day. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to show you the Showalter calculation from MetPy. And, well, instead of just showing you the simple calculation call, because that's pretty easy, I thought we would get some sounding data from an outbreak event earlier in 2021. And then we'll make a map of that data. And we're going to do the mapping a little differently than I've done before. I know we've made plots of LCL, for example, before. So we're going to solve the same problem using some different techniques and make a slightly different looking plot as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to need are data. So from Siphon, simple web service, Iowa State, I'm going to import the Iowa State upper air object. And from date time, I'm going to import the date time object. The data that we request is going to be from Iowa State Upper Air, request all data, date time, remember we go from largest to smallest, so year, month, day, hour, and anything that we don't specify is zero. And I'm using tab completion to go ahead and uh, do all of this typing very fast and to help reduce errors. So don't forget to use that as well. If we look at the data frame that's returned, we see we've got 14,838 rows. If we wanted to see how many stations that is, we see there's a station column. We could look at data station. Again, there's several ways you could do this, but I would probably use unique and then find the length of that to see that there are 121 unique stations in this data frame. Okay, so what are we going to do with all that data? Well, we're going to do the Showalter calculation on it, and then we know we're gonna to need to map it. So the next piece of information I need is the location of all of these stations. And for that, we're going to pull a text file from the internet. I'm gonna create a DF locations data frame. And we've done this in some of our previous videos. It's from ruck.noaa.gov slash rayobs slash stat 2000 dot text. And if you were to go to that address, you would see a list of three-letter station identifiers, some other station identifying information, latitude, longitude, elevation, dates of operation, uh, name, state, and so on. So we know we're going to have to do some pre-processing. That looks like a whitespace delimited file. So delim on whitespace is going to be true. I'm going to skip the header row and I'm only interested in the station ID, which is column zero, and lat and lawn, columns three and four. I don't really need to read all of that other information in and manage it. And we'll provide the names of those columns, which are going to be station, lat, and lawn. And we need to import pandas. And we change that to skip rows. One of the great things about the notebooks makes this rapid iteration uh, very possible. So if we look at the head of this data frame, we see the station, lat, and lawn. That all looks good, except for one thing. We need to add another step. The longitudes here are negative, but they have the minus sign omitted. So what we need to do is specify 
that we're going to take the longitude column and multiply it by minus 1. And that looks more realistic. If you take the lat and lawn and just plot them in Google Maps or Google Earth, you'll see that they end up somewhere not in the U.S. unless you take the longitude and multiply by negative 1. All right, so now we've got information from the soundings as well as the location of those soundings. It's time to do our calculations. I'm going to create a dictionary called index, which this could be used for any index. In this case, we're going to use it for showalter index. And we know we're going to need to do some imports. Import mepy.calc has mpcalc. For mepy.units, I'm going to need to import units. And I'm going to go ahead and import numpy as np. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is loop across all of the unique stations. And we already know how to do that. For station in data, station dot unique. We looked at the dot unique earlier. I'm going to get the sounding for that station, which is data, where the data station data series is equal to the station that we're looking for, because we only have one time slice here. We're not going to have multiple soundings from one station, so we don't have to check the time. I'm going to go ahead, since a lot of calculations don't deal well with NANDs, and we often have NANDs in these data, and it just makes our calculation faster if we're not looking over a bunch of NAND things. I'm going to use drop in A. And I know that I'm going to need temperature, pressure, and a dew point. So it's going to drop any rows where we don't have all three of those. And we're going to do that in place. Now we're ready to do our calculation. I'm going to use a try here. The show alter index value, mpcalc, show alter index. We look at the doc string. Pressure, temperature, dew point. So we're going to provide our sounding. Pressure. And since this is a MetPy calculation, it's going to expect units. We haven't attached units yet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we know that to attach units, we need to get it out of the pandas data series into just a plain and numpy array. We're going to do that with dot values. And we're going to do the same for temperature dot values times units degree Celsius sounding dew point dot values times units dot degree Celsius. And we're going to take the zero thing that comes back from that and take its magnitude. We want to drop the delta degree units that it's going to come out with. All right, so that's great. We put it in a try, though, because we know that sounding data can be particularly messy and cause a calculation to fail. I am going to, in this case, catch every exception, but we're going to do it in such a way that we see it so we know why we're failing here. So first of all, if we fail that try, I'm going to set the show alter index value to be a NAN. Then I'm going to print the message error for station, station, and then we will print that error out. This is just a handy way to see what's going on. And finally, I'm going to assign with the key of station the value of our show alter index. All right, and we get just a few warnings, a few stations where this didn't work. We could go dig into those if we want. Uh, but for now, given how many stations we had, we're going to just keep going. Uh, this has to do with the amount of data above and below values and uh, interpolation issues that could be happening. All right, so now we can look at that index. And we see we've got our dictionary that's got the station name and the show alter values.
So finally, we're ready to make our plot. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm going to import cartapy.crs, the coordinate reference system as ccrs. Import cartapy.feature as cfeature. I'm going to go ahead and set up the coordinate reference system for our map. I'm going to use the Lambert conformal. I'm going to set the central longitude to be minus 100 and the central latitude to be 45 in this case. I'm also going to specify some bounds, which we're expecting a list of bounds. So I'm going to make a list that has, contains one element, which is a tuple. Our left and right, bottom and top bounds. So lawn, lawn, lat, lat. Now I'm going to go ahead and define two functions that are going to be useful for our mapping. The first function is going to assign a color to the Showalter index. And there again are several ways you could do this. I'm going to show you one this time. Maybe next time we make a map of some index parameters, we'll look at a different way. Don't forget your doc string. Assign a color to Showalter index based on value. And you would probably want to put some more information in there as well. I'm going to say if Showalter index is greater than 2, this is where it's going to be very stable even with a strong lifting mechanism in place. I'm going to return tab green. Don't have to use an else if because we're already going to have returned by this point. If Showalter index is greater than 0, implying it's less than 2 or equal to 2 but greater than 0, it could be potentially unstable with a strong lifting mechanism. So we'll call that olive. If the Showalter index is less than or equal to zero, but greater than minus three, we're getting into moderate instability. I'm gonna assign that tab orange. If the Showalter index is less than or equal to minus three, but greater than minus six. We're at a relatively high instability. I'm going to return tab red. And if the index is less than or equal to minus six, we are extremely unstable. And I'm going to return the color tab purple. Now, if we make it all the way through here and we haven't returned, I'm going to return black. It'll plot the point as black and we know something's wrong. The second handy utility function that I'm going to define is called inbounds. And you'll see why we need this in a little bit, but it's going to take a latin a lawn for a point, and then a min lawn, max lawn, min lat, max lat, and it's going to tell us, determine if a lat lawn pair falls mathematically within the given bounds. So we're not doing any fancy projection here. This is a very simple, naive way to do this, but it's going to serve our purposes. If the lawn is greater than or equal to the min lawn, and the lawn is less than or equal to the max lawn, and the lat is less than or equal to the max lat, and the lat is greater than or equal to the min lat. Then we're going to return true. It's within that bounding box. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So with these utility functions defined, now we're ready to actually write the plot code. Like always, we're going to start out by making a figure, plot.figure. I'm going to set my fig size in this case to be 17 by 12. 
x. I'm going to use the add subplot method. One row, one column, first plot. And specify the projection is CRS, which is my Lambert Connick conformal projection I defined earlier. I'm going to set the extent to be my unpacked bounds. And the coordinate reference system for those is plat Curie, just plain lat lawn. I'm going to add a feature, which is C feature dot coastline dot with scale and we'll go 1 to 50 million and we'll go with a three-quarter point line width C feature dot states line width of half Now, we've got our base map. How are we going to do our plotting? Again, several ways you could do this. Uh, I'm going to do a looping way where we go over every station and look at its show alter value and see if it's within bounds. So for station and the show alter value, so the key value pair in our index dictionary dot items. First, let's get the station location. You look at our DF locations data frame where DF locations, the station data series is equal to our station name. But remember, it uses the three letter identifier. So the last three to the end. And we want the values from that. We want to go ahead and pull it out of whatever data structure we might get back from pandas. If the length of that station location is greater than zero, meaning if we found it, we're going to ignore the station name. We already know that. We're going to get the Latin lawn using unpacking syntax of the zeroth thing or the only thing that we likely get back from that. Else, continue. That means if we didn't find the station in our station locations, we don't know how to plot it. We don't know the Latin lawn. Just go back to the top of the loop and go on to the next thing. Now we're ready to do our plot, our, our scatter. If not, so if the Showalter index value is not a NAN, and I'm going to call my inbounds function with lat lawn, and I'm going to unpack the zeroth thing out of my bounds. So that takes that bounds list, gets the zeroth thing, which is a tuple, and then unpacks it into our function call there. So if we've got a value for show alter and that station is in bounds of our map, mathematically, not necessarily geographically, we're ready to scatter plot that point. Lawn lat, the color is going to be get color based on the value of the show alter index. The transform is plat Curie. And we're going to plot some text, lawn lat, and I'm going to subtract 0.3 degrees in lat to put the text a little under the point. Use an F string. I'm going to plot the value to one decimal point. The transform again is plat Curie. Horizontal alignment, I'm going to set it to be center. Vertical alignment, I'm going to set it to be top. And then we go ahead and close that print. Now, while that's running, is this the most efficient way to do this? Not necessarily. We could do everything in one scatter call instead of doing this looping. But this gives us a way to do less data pre-cleaning. And as you'll see, it doesn't actually take that long to run. So unless we're running a lot of these, which is unlikely given the amount of sounding data we've got, it's not going to be a huge deal. It's a trade-off between your development time and code complication and code readability 
and runtime. So for me, this was the appropriate trade-off for this particular map. It does take just a second to run, but again, not that long. And here's the map we get. Now I can tell you that this particular outbreak occurred in the southeastern U.S., and that makes sense looking at the map. We see that we've got values, remember yellow would be stable, except in the presence of strong lifting. Then the orange would be moderately, very unstable, and extremely unstable down here in Texas. So we would expect most of our severe weather to occur along this corridor, and indeed that's what we saw during this event. I hope that you found this useful and learned another way to do some tasks that you might already be doing. If you do something different, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I'll see you on next week's MetPie Monday.